Hello and welcome to this episode of TF. It is Riley and Milo and Hussein and November. For those of you who are just tuning in. I just changed my in. name. I changed my name to a month because I thought it would make me interesting. Mm. And you know yes. what? It's worked. That's right. Also, in other news that you may have missed, if you sign up from, I think, two weeks from now via the Apple Patreon app on your iPhone, it will be more expensive because of Apple fuckery. This is one of the several warnings you will receive. Mm-hmm. If you want to sign up, sign up differently. If you're already signed up via Apple, you will not be affected. If you're still in in line to vote, stay in line. (laughs) Go on your web browser to patreon.com slash trash future. Or use the Google Google store. (laughs) Use the Google Google store. Use Netscape Navigator (laughs) to toddle on over to patreon.com slash trash future. Yes. Uh, Just toddle on to AOL. (laughs) <laughs> That's right. Fire up Ask G. I mean, if you really want to be old school, find someone who has a subscription to this show and bring a tape recorder. Ooh. Mm. Yeah. No, do not, like, don't, like, do not do and, that. And, and buy it off <laughs> and inherit it. Home taping is killing <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> and I want to introduce our guest. It is Abby Thorne once again. Abby, how's it going? Hello, hello, hello. It's nice to be here. Always a delight to be on TF. So we've got a, a few news items to cover. One of which oh, is something... keep happening, for oh. fuck's sake. Some of which is going to be a little bit of UK politics. and but well, that mostly, keeps happening too, for fuck's sake. Oh. Mostly, mostly today what we're going to be talking about is transphobes continuing to be viciously anti-normal. Oh, you mm-hmm. know what? That keeps happening as well. Mm-hmm. More know? and more. <laughs> Time is a flat circle, mm. I feel, strongly. However, before we do that, a couple of news items. Number one, finally... Keir Starmer, after announcing uh, that br- uh, he promises to not have an industrial strategy to respect any kind of mad tax cuts that Jeremy Hunt puts through, mm-hmm. in, in, in because he's going to try something mm. new, it's Jeremy Hunt. He's going to try. There's only one mad Jeremy that Keir Starmer will respect. <laughs> is, and yeah. let me tell you. Yeah, Clarkson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Um, I think what he's doing with that farm is very admirable. <laughs> it's great for the economy of Oxfordshire, yeah, and it's now. great for blokes who enjoy machinery. So what uh, what uh, Hunt is doing uh, is he's doing an experiment in governing the British state. Uh, this is pushing the frontiers mm. of what is possible to do. He will be cutting funding to pay for tax cuts to stimulate growth in the economy. Wow, we've never wow. tried that. It, well, the thing is, right, this is also the thing that, uh, if we recall, mere moments ago, under mm. Liz Trust, like, crashed the economy <laughs> instantly. <laughs> oh, no, but they're going to be funded this time because okay. it's going to be tax cuts plus spending cuts. Oh, it's going to okay. be great. Fine. Don't worry, we're reducing the UK to one cop. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be so busy. <laughs> however, however, looking at this, Keir Starmer has stood up and bravely said... The one cop should be a woman. No, he is <laughs> yeah, See, I interviewed for this, and it's nice to have that support. Not, you know? not that kind of woman. He has Fuck. stood up, and he has bravely said, no more energy drinks for under 16s. <laughs> That's right. Getting Great. to grips it's with dangerous. the real issues Great. of yeah. our times. The big problems. There is a monster mm. haunting Britain, and that monster exists mm. on every corner. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think children can be trusted with wings. <laughs> Some of them are too young to drive. <laughs> the thing is, right, like, energy drinks are legitimately terrible for you, and mm-hmm. it is kind of bad as one of about a million, like, ultra-processed food things that now you can't be a teenager or an adult, for that matter, anymore without being extremely caffeinated all the time. But I, I tend to view this mostly as a return to kind of, like, old labour instincts, but it's like, you know, the dead hand of power, because when Blair or Brown did this, they needed a sort of a Jamie Oliver figure, right, to pilot this mecca, mm. to drive this thing through. <laughs> An Anthony Worrell Thompson. Yeah, get in the mecca, otherwise mm. Anthony Worrell Thompson will have to do it again. But, like, this time, it's just purely off their own bat. It's just like, what can what can we do to, uh, you know, make society a bit more repressive and controlling? 
Let's just do some nanny state shit. Let's mm. ban mm. kids from drinking horrible energy mm. drinks. They got uh, off Anthony Worrell Thompson's shoplifting Eva <laughs> in a black <laughs> giant. Try and stop me now, security guard. It's not really shoplifting at that point. It's kind of escalated to mecha armed robbery. <laughs> I, I like to imagine Starmer as a kind of loose Roman emperor, just sort of throwing figs at um at what he's going to ban next. You know, too, too, many, too much sugar in figs, you can't be doing that. <laughs> if you want an easy to understand, normal metaphor to understand what this means, imagine Starmer as a Roman emperor throwing figs <laughs> at a mecha piloted by Anthony Warhol Tops. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but a late Are you Roman following please, along please, at home? Please subscribe to the Patreon so we can yeah, finally yeah. get some carbon monoxide detectors for the studio. <laughs> mm. yeah, but he has to be one of the later ones. You know, I don't mean like Nerva. Yeah, no, we mean like Septimus Severus yeah. or something. But you yeah. can't spell Nerva without Nerva. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, so right there. Not Elagabalus. <laughs> anyway, this is, but this is like, yes, it is, as you say, uh, Nova, it is clearly bad for children to be like giving themselves cardiac episodes. Yeah. By like drink again by drinking sort of sweet things marketed to them, but again like when you think about what the priorities are, what he wants to use the power of the state to do, it's just to take stuff away and yeah, and ki- kids kids aren't only drinking these mm. because they're available; they're also drinking them to take the edge off everything else about being in Britain, yeah, man. being insanely stressful. I was going to say that like you know I I'm I'm currently in a stage in my life where I'm sort of having to work in a shop for a little bit, and like so I've had. My first attempt, my, my first hand experience of selling these awful products to children as if I am like mm. a legal drug dealer. And like, you're right. I think in the sense for like, you know, a lot of these kids just buy these things like and vapes included as well. just because like they're bored and there is literally nothing else to do except for sort of like get high on whatever you can. And like in Britain, that has sort of always been kind of the culmin- like what I would sort of define youth culture as just whereas mm. nothing to do in your shitty little town. And so until you have the money to move into London to go buy more expensive drugs, you have to sort of deal with what you have <laughs> right now. Yeah, until you ascend to like... If, hmm. And if you're in a shitty little town, your, your drugs of choice are caffeinated drinks, oversweet vapes, and like if some guy like has like the worst weed you've ever smoked in your life. All of which is to say, I feel like Keir Starmer is really looking after the little man here. And we, that is like... The guy in your school that so will yeah, sell Rishi you Sunak. will sell you the worst weed that you can imagine. Well, that's that's the last business left in Britain now. <laughs> Who's saying I'm imagining you trying to give a lecture on structural causes of malaise to like a 15 year old? He's saying you try no, you don't want this monster. You, you you think you do because there's because of austerity. I had I had this debate with a child because they wanted to like <laughs> they wanted to buy. It gets worse, it gets worse, it gets worse. I had a debate with a child because Did you win? Did you win first? No, I lost. They wanted to buy they wanted to buy this cheap energy drink. And I was like, look, dude, you want to go for like go get something a bit more premium. Have you looked at sort of uh the monster fruit punch? And they were like You're upselling a child on <laughs> monster. I was like, come on. They're like, nah, nah, boost is not gonna cut yeah, it, my No, G. the margin the margins in the monster are so much better. Please buy that. Like, you know, please do it. And they didn't do it. Mm. And so Are you an are you I once again lost a debate to a child. But, um, you, but you had the last laugh because you swapped that out for a savoury vape at the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was getting blue raz and then boom, a hit of roast chicken. Oh, you, you'd, you'd hate, you'd hate you a savoury energy drink. <laughs> Just oh, like the red wine flavoured Red Bull. Are you saying that you are a kind of energy drink sommelier? Uh, I did. <laughs> I, I, I feel like I did try that as a bit a long time ago, and you didn't quite like. I didn't. It didn't quite hit. But I bought. I, I did buy like a wine glass somewhere for the pure for the purpose of when I was bored during lockdown, doing the monster energy sommelier thing. <laughs> <laughs> but but to bring it back around, right? We mentioned earlier that like they're not doing their the, any of the green investment, any of the industrial strategy, yeah. right? No. The strategy for governing Britain is not even the one that was a giveaway to industry that industry wanted, because that's adapting to the climate crisis in the way that capital wants to adapt, which is, hey, here's some investment. It's been completely de-risked. Uh, congratulations, you go build it. Yeah, the, the, literally yeah. The, 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 um, the Inflation Recovery Act of like, here yeah. is infinite free money. Yes. To go and like do solar panels, please do solar panels yep. and grift it for all your worth. Like, Send that's... the caffeinated children into the mines. That's what I say. <laughs> the, the thing is, and I identify with Keir Starmer a little bit here because he's too submissive for his own good. <laughs> right? He's given them everything that they want, and they're like, "Yeah, this is perfect. Uh, cheers. Wait, wait until the next election." And that weight is driving him insane, and so he is just mm. offering more and more things that no one mm. wants or needs. 
because he's like, please, you know, uh, it's 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 important that you are entirely on side with me. So I'll give you anything, absolutely anything. Stuff it's an interrogation even strategy where you just don't say anything and you just let Keir Starmer monologue until he's like, <laughs> shall we shall we, abol- shall we abolish the navy? <laughs> I'm, I'm open to it. What, okay, what if what if all of the energy drinks were given to the Navy in order to reduce their staff by fifty percent, in order to fund a tax cut on capital gains? How about that? They're just still not saying anything. He's like he's talking to a rubber doll. So, One ship left. HMS Relentless. So that's right. Hey. But if, if you want to hey. HMS Monster, which is a tugboat, if you want to talk though about a perfect example of the of the absolute decrepitude of the governance of this mm-hmm. country, the, the disease that has taken hold of the governing class, you must look no further than the charts describing the price action of ARM, which was like Britain's only important tech company in yeah. any sense of the word. Yeah, who, who are they? What do they, what do they make? So ARM is a microchip designer. Yeah, they, they, they make microprocessors, right? But, okay. but they, 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 make the, they design microprocessors and work with everybody else who makes them. Okay. It's an incredibly important company. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. sort of like, it, okay, so they're a British company, which exists because the University of Cambridge like, spun off a tech thing. That's part of what the University of Cambridge still exists for, mm. is to create companies like this as like a, I guess you could fashionably call it a tech incubator, right? Yeah, and and long suffering stand up <laughs> comedian podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The two things that Cambridge makes. But so, right. um, yeah, the, the, they had this uh, this company ARM that is tremendously valuable, tremendously strategically important, and what any government that was interested in governing should have done many years ago was park a tank division on their front lawn and go into the the like head office and say. If you try and move any of this shit out of the UK, we'll fucking kill you. <laughs> That's like legitimately that is that kind of protectionism is the only like valid method of governing here. And what they've done instead is not do that. And surprise, surprise, a bunch of it is being offshored. And like this has been in the offing for years that ARM cannot wait to get out of the UK and into the US. So specifically what happened, right? And by the way, that thing of parking tanks on the lawn and saying you will not move the technology out of this pl- of this geographical area is mm-hmm. what the US did. And again, yes. Yeah, you, f- you have a shitload of stuff like the Defense Production Act that you can use to do this. Yeah, it worked for their purposes. Now yeah. what happened in 2016 is that um, after the Brexit vote pushed down the... I'm sorry, I'm going to put on my Steve Bray top hat here. <laughs> yeah. After the Brexit vote pushed down the value of sterling, Masayoshi Son walked into ARM and said, hey, I see that you've now been, you're now selling at a discount because of sterling. I'm going to take out a bunch of loans to buy you and put you in our Saudi investment vehicle. And then it was just allowed to go ahead... Right, it was allowed to go ahead by uh, Philip Hammond and Theresa May to make Brexit look good. Cool. How does this make Brexit look good? Because people wanted to invest in a British company. So you're telling me that ARM is based on Newcastle United? (laughs) We sold it. We sold it to the Saudis, and now everyone makes fun of them and just chants at them. (laughs) So so, so, it's actually owned half by Sports Direct. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, what it sort of is is like if in the early years of the Industrial Revolution we had taken the first steam engine made in Britain. And like dumped it on cinder blocks outside the factory and gone. Does anyone want to buy this and like take it out of the country? Because I'm sick of looking at it. <laughs> it's it's as though we sold the first steam engine to like the Meiji Emperor. Yeah, if you're listening <laughs> at home and you want an easy to understand metaphor, it's as if we sold the first steam engine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To the to the Meiji Emperor. There's a, there's a mecha with Anthony Worrell Thompson inside in there. <laughs> Keith yeah. Storm has got so- some figs. It's a lot like if Suleiman the Magnificent, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so the reason that we bring this all this up at the same time is if you are to have, it's not again, it's not saying AI is great, right? None of that. But if you are to have an industrial strategy, if you do believe that it's important to have like AI capabilities and stuff, and have lots of data centers and be able to at least, if not de- fabricate, then at least design chips and be important in the global economy, then keeping that company in the country would be super important. Yeah. Just as, for example, would be building wind turbines, adapting to the climate Mm. crisis. I have a second piece of kind of like national security thing here, which is that this is going to segue into or tie into a later segment, but I will point out that ARM as uh, like an architecture was co-designed by a trans woman. So if you want Britain Mm. to be a sort of competitive economy in the 21st century, two things. One, you have to stop technology companies from offshoring, 
and two, you have to be fucking nicer to trans women. This is what I'm fucking saying about about Kim Petras because like we oh, are so obsessed sake. in this country with. Can we like, cut her mic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're, we're so obsessed in this country with like trying to stop children transitioning, and it's like. Kim, Kim Petras yeah, was a child Yeah, we're falling behind in the transition we are. race. Like, we literally are. China's we trans kids are fucking mogging our trans kids. They, like, they literally are. Like, Germany has, it's like, it's decades ahead of us on, like, she's like a massive <laughs> trans pop star. Look at the Americans. They're, like, producing people like Hunter Schaefer. Like, we are falling fucking behind. Britain can only produce such rudimentary transsexuals as November Kelly and Abigail Thorne. And me. Like, what, like, <laughs> what have we got? It's you and me and Paris Lees uh, and, <laughs> and uh, Yasmin. <laughs> Uh, it's like the Sten gun in World War Two. Like you know, it was functional. We're still yeah, doing cavalry yeah. charges, and they're fucking mm. building the A bomb. Like I, I'm sort of, I quite like this. I'm sort of Our proud boys of have this. only got access to trans women that are just a couple of pipes welded together. <laughs> but they're still fighting, Jerry. Yeah, the closest thing I have to patriotism is that my gender is effectively two steel pipes welded together in a dying mm. country. That still somehow works. You know? the spitfire of trans women. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said about me. Thank you. Yeah, that's so, right. He's changed your name to Spitfire, is it you like? <laughs> Shit, maybe. No, not again. I just got used to the new one. <laughs> no, so uh, let's let's flip the order around a little bit, actually. Rather than talking about the um, ongoing, I'd say, uh, Labour Party falling apart because it has received a, 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 a homeopathic amount. Of its own of, medicine, yes, yes. indeed. Oh. Uh, I want to skip directly uh, to our, uh, our our core topic, which is fucking be nicer to trans women. I- indeed, yeah. I-, I I've picked three stories. I think that are again, like, uh, will will spark some interesting conversation here, which is just stuff that's happened in the last week or so about just the viciously vicious campaign against being regular, yeah, being waged <laughs> yeah. by oh, yeah, trans cool. folks. It's back to business as usual. We had like. I think less than 24 hours of uh, of people being like, well, maybe transphobia is bad, actually. And then we were just like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had the, like, dead kids bad mm-hmm. make us feel upset. That immediately got diverted in ways I previously talked about into we have to ban kids from being on their phones. Yeah. And so now we're, as you say, back to business as, as usual. The next day we had, well, should we just ban them from sports? And then now the NHS hmm. is doing another fucking consultation that's just like, should we allow trans children to exist or should we fire them out of a sort of cannon? <laughs> At the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, the, uh, but they have V2 trans women. Mm. Well, see, the German dependence on like individually impressive but hard to maintain trans women is ultimately going to be their undoing, you know? It was all just cheap Russian gas. <laughs> <laughs> These German neo pussies seized up in the cold of Stalingrad, <laughs> whereas the poorly engineered Russian pussy continued to function <laughs> due to its high tolerance. Exactly, exactly. The German, the German neo vagina has a lot of like finicky, not user replaceable parts that are going to break down in quite a long supply chain. Whereas mm. the Soviet neo vagina doesn't matter that it's cheap; it comes out of the factory unpainted. There's two million more of them in Siberia, moving west. Yeah. To be fair, like some some of the NHS neo vaginas that I've encountered are fucking phenomenal. Oh, I've I've seen I've seen the binder. Yeah, like, but they'll, they'll Alexander nearly kill you. Kuntashnikov presents his new invention. You may, you might well be killed in the operation, but I, I I've seen some that are fucking you wouldn't believe it. But like, yeah, have it you seen, would be nice if they let me have one. I've one seen of these pussies days. you people wouldn't believe. <laughs> Literally a thing Literally that can have. be true. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like so. Um, what well, one of the. One of the uh, 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 sort of items to t- that we're discussing is actually a a row, a complete again invented controversy. Mm. All of these, by the two of these three things are invented controversies. No, we still invent things in this country. <laughs> controversies, <laughs> there are others. We no longer design the trunky. We no longer design sort of the single most important commodity for what most people believe will be the global economy going forward. Mm. But we do stir up a lot of controversy and pay columnists. We don't even mm. design controversies. We import most of them from the US. <laughs> so um, Terrible. They closed down the controversy <laughs> factory in Port Albert. <laughs> it's, it's lend lease, you know? Yeah, no. so the, um, basically, the, uh, there was a proposal uh, put forth in Parliament um, for people to be able to be not misgendered on death. Yeah, this is, so, <laughs> basically, right, of the two documents that the state has in relation to, the two most important ones are birth certificate and death certificate, right? And so, if you don't get a gender recognition certificate to amend your birth certificate, your death certificate will match the sex, it says on your birth certificate, right? Mm. And this is 
a focus of particular cruelty, right? Because whenever a trans person dies, if they don't have a gender recognition certificate, which very few of us do, because they're a pain in the ass to get, mm -hmm. then the state is sort of like legally obliged to misgender you. Let's mention why it's a pain in the ass to get. Firstly, it's uh, expensive. Secondly, yeah. it's humiliating. Thirdly, yeah. you have to submit one piece of evidence from every two months that you have lived in what they call your acquired gender. They all have to be different. They all have to have your name, address, and uh, a gendered title like Ms. or Mr. on. So just listen, to, imagine if you've been oh, living- a, the, another one. You have, to, you have to get your spouse's permission or get yes. divorced. Yes. Um, so listeners, imagine if I asked you to submit one piece of evidence from every two months of the last <sighs> period of your life for like, I don't know, 10 years. It's a fucking impossible administrative task. Mm -hmm. mm. And this, in, in this case, right, the response to this quite reasonable, again, this reasonable bare minimum of, mm -hmm. hey, maybe we should just, at, at least let's allow dead people to self-identify, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. They're like, no, it's too dangerous. Yeah, so self-identification by the back door is the objection to this, yeah, right? Yeah. Which what if the dead start identifying as the living and then we'll be in some kind of Shaun of the Dead situation? And, and this is the thing, like so many of the objections to self ID just melt into into the ether when you are applying them to dead people, right? Because you can't hmm. be like, what if someone uses this falsely if what they're using it to do falsely is decompose? <laughs> like, but also, yeah. no, e even then, I think that's being slightly too generous to them because I, they also melt into nothingness when you apply them to living people. The objection well, yes, has always been like, so, oh, what if you know. could like self ID and then enter a women's bathroom, which is completely defeated by the fact that you don't need to show your birth certificate to enter a fucking toilet, right? Wait, mm. what? Oh, yeah, I know. Like, you've just been showing it every I've time. I've been carrying it around for no reason. <laughs> so, like, like, I think this is what Innuendo Studios, Ian Danskin, would call trying to control the conversation. Like, what the, what they want. So, there's there's a, a, a quote here from Lucy Marsh, who's the spokesperson from the Society for Making Life Worse, or whatever it's called, mm, some right-wing yeah. think tank. She says, It's extremely concerning that Labour appears to be pushing towards introducing gender self-ID through the back door. If coroners are allowed to lie on public record about the sex of deceased children, this will surely be a slippery slope towards self-ID becoming normalised in the NHS, Getting right? more and more perverse wanting to know the sex of deceased children. It like, is, but they, they want us to get mm. tied up in these conversations about who can change the legal documents and when, and what the documents allow you to do, while the, kind of, the core lie that transphobia rallies around remains intact, which is that, that they maintain that human beings cannot change sex. And like, my response to this is just an absolute like Chad meme. Yes, we can. Like, you can change sex. It's easy. It's fun to do if other people will fucking get over themselves and let you. And legal documents need to fucking reflect that reality. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it. This is the thing, right? It's not a difficult administrative thing to do. What it is for transphobic people and institutions is a conceptually difficult thing to do. Right? Is the switch to like? It, it is not difficult to make a field editable. Right, but it is difficult to like think of that specific field as like in order to make that change. Right, and yeah, absolutely. Mm. And so the um, this the responses from various like MPs and campaigning groups have been say as you've been saying, Abby. It's like, oh, this will allow people to to self ID through the back door. But again, wait, the back mortuary door. Are they concerned about like a night of the living dead situation <laughs> yeah. where they don't respect changing rooms? <laughs> Or, but also, again, the idea that, no, we must never bend truth to accommodate the extreme and dangerous ideology, and that will allow us to misrecord the sex of dead children. And what I always, what I enjoyed, this whole sort of segue into the next sort of news item that we talked about, which was, of course, the one that was also had a, uh, I think, a very sort of um, good article in The Guardian written about it by Jonathan Liu, because I imagine the sports section didn't get the same memo the op-ed section did. Legitimately, yes. It's just yeah. not. It's it's fully not being accountable to the same couple of people. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that that basically. Hey, how come? Uh. Th this a, a again the policy exchange seems to have declared. I don't know. Kind of war, sort of on Park Run, which if you're not um British, is an event that's been happening in Britain for a while, where it's just a group of people running around a park where you don't. There's no winners. Uh, they record a finishing time if you want, uh, yeah, and you can do an, it on like a, an yeah. iPhone. Like yeah. it, it's it's not rigorous in any sort of way. It's meant to be a bit of fun. It's like extremely casual. And again, like I have a similar objection to to Abby's about death certificates, right? About this, which is that I don't want to concede the idea that like the value of records in professional sport is something that can be threatened by the existence of like trans people competing as our gender in the thing. But 
this is still a case where it doesn't matter anyway because it's nothing like that. It is purely mm. casual. There is no reason to be rigorous about this. There is no possible way you can expect a loose organization of park runners to try and like be sequencing people's fucking genomes or whatever the fuck, like the IOC. It's it's just it, it, what it is is it, it's an attack on like human dignity of trans people in a way that it is completely impractical and intended to like scare you know some quite nice people who like to run in the park into line well, also, of being like, also the get threat on is, board that, um, is that government funding from Sport England would be withdrawn, right? Yeah. If I understood that correctly. Is that if oh, they, this, this right-wing think tank, like the exchange of, of absolute batshit nonsense institution, have been like, oh, if you don't start sequencing everyone's genome and recording a faulty understanding of what biological sex is to reflect our mad fantasies about it, then we'll withdraw your taxpayers' money. And it's just like, but I, I really loved it, though, that the, the news went down to interview the people who do parkrun, and they were all just hmm. like, no, I actually think it's fine. It's just a bit of fun. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a bit of fun. I think it's nice that sport's more inclusive. Mm. Things of this nature. Like, you actually ask people about this. And particularly, you ask them about this on the level of a sport that they can and do actually participate in themselves, mm -hmm. rather than some, like, elite sort of uh, athletics thing where people's instinct is maybe, oh, people work really hard on that, so, you mm. know, it's important to preserve the imagined sanctity of it. In this case, it's fully just like, no, it's, it's a bit of fun, therefore, wh why are you asking me about this? Mm -hmm. well, and, and, wait, about, wait until you hear about their plan to let trans women participate in tossing the pill about with Chugsy. <laughs> That's really going to attract some controversy. So I mean, it's it's that, and then uh, trans men are getting the rights to participate in uh, getting shirtless and hitting each other over the back with chairs, <laughs> which is going to be a That's huge right. moment for them. You know, I'm very happy yeah. for them. And and this is this comes back to I think the the whenever these sort of media and political obsessions that make perfect sense between columnists and MPs when they talk to one another, mm. actually break containment and reach the world of people with actual concerns doing actual things, again and again, they are met with, at best, confusion, which again, I find like, quite hard. One of, one of the mm. best determinants of whether or not someone holds transphobic attitudes is whether they say that they know a trans person, <laughs> right? Like. Having actual exposure to trans people makes you aware of the fact that we aren't, in fact, sort of acid blood having monsters. Hmm. And some of us are. <laughs> well, yeah, of course, naturally, hmm. but like in general, mm -hmm. I for one am two bits of steel welded together in like a, a shed in Wooden Bassett. But no, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dads love her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But so yeah, it's it's. I, I think it's this thing where. It, it, this kind of transphobia flourishes in isolation and like radicalization and watching GB news or being on the fucking internet all the time. And those are things that do not correlate very well with going out and like having a touch run in the grass. park. Literally touching yeah, grass. Yeah, yeah. Legitimately, what they've done is they've gone to the like All England Touching Grass Association and gone, hey, have you seen our weird online beefs? You have to get in on these or else. Park, park run is like the perfect lab rat for this because it is like the most like head empty pure vibes people who have been on 10,000 hinge dates and think junkyard golf is awesome level of people who aren't online <laughs> like, but because fucking Shazza and Dino right who uh, live for curry night at Weatherspoons are not habitually driving themselves insane on the internet yeah. about trans women you got ask better Dino shit to what be he doing. thinks about trans women and he'll go some of them are fit <laughs> like, yeah and there endeth the lesson, you know? Yeah. There's nothing more to it. And that's a king. <laughs> and, you know, this is, if you go back to what the policy exchange is saying, they say it's important to do this because they, because they have to say, they have to have a fig leaf justification other than just, it's important to do this because we're mental. <laughs> uh, their fig leaf justification is, it's important to do this because women and girls are now self-excluding and our achievements but are doctor, denied a public I am record. women and girls, and I self-exclude yeah. from shit constantly because mm. of all of this mad bullshit. Well, and also, if you're also thinking about cis, like, cis women and girls, this is a time when, like, national legislators, if they see a, like, tall cis woman with a short haircut, will mm -hmm. start a panic about her in the press. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, Tilda Swinton, you're on fucking notice. <laughs> <laughs> Again, like, no, this, this happens. This happens. Uh, where like I, I think it was um uh, uh Klein in the in the U.S. who's mentioned in the Guardian article says like it created a national panic because like she saw like a um 
uh, just a tall cis woman going and like competing in a sport. Oh yeah, I mean this is an insanely sadistic and like very racist, by the way. Like mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. particularly in sort of like professional sport or like yeah. there's really like higher levels of sport. You you saw like athletes like former Olympians talking amongst themselves, speculating about which specifically black athletes yep. they thought had like elevated testosterone levels because they were secretly men. Mm-hmm. Like. Caster Semenya was like yep. sort of patient zero of this, but like, well, not even, like it goes back way before her, but it's absolutely repulsive. And it's so, so strange to to see it sort of like out of, if you like, its element and now fully in the realm of fun runs. Well, it's already it's already been in school sports as well. Like there's dads in oh, the yeah. US who've had to be removed from like school sports games because they just start yelling about how some nine year old on the opposite team is trans. And it's mm. just like, you sorry, you're mad. You're mad. Well, it is it, it it is a kind of like a mimetic disease. Yeah. You, know, you you become unable to perceive the world. Of Brain worms. The anti woke mind virus. And the the, the third item uh, is uh, the <laughs> I think my favorite one of the three. Yeah. This is this is in some ways the most depressing because it's yeah. the most mental. Yeah. Well, it's the uh, the it's the 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 most strain, mm. right? It's the it is. Because this is like ultimately most transphobic arguments come down to something like this. Yeah, which Ew. is yeah, which is a this is this this woman has been um, being threatened with a fine by her council, or as the Daily Mail calls them, council bureaucrats, mm-hmm. over like posting images of like top surgery to her front door, being like, <laughs> "I am making posting a point." Posting to your front door, <laughs> physically posting like in her window, printing yes. them out like like yes. scars of, of top surgery and, and like breast. I'm posting like, this and not in a horny way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. But, but why though? <laughs> well, in, in God's name, why do this? <laughs> well, uh, thank you for asking, November. Um, that's because uh, she well she wasn't just as well um, photographs of uh, of surgery. Uh huh. It was also an advert for uh, a book by Helen Joyce. Of course, irreversible damage. Yeah. No, sorry, no. that's uh, Abigail Schreier. Uh, allow me to fill you in on who Helen oh, Joyce is. Fuck. Helen Joyce, former editor of The Economist, uh, caught on camera saying that we need to reduce the number of trans people who exist in the world. Every single oh. one of these people is a problem for a sane society. I think is the exact quote. Even oh, the cool. ones who are happily transitioned. Also, much of her book, uh, which is called Trans, uh, when ideology meets reality. Uh, is actually lifted from anti-Semitic conspiracy theorist Jennifer Billick uh, without attribution, oh, which made Jennifer Billick yeah. extremely upset. And uh, Joyce oh, has not repeatedly plagiarizing your anti-Semitism. Yeah, uh, 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 <laughs> Joyce has repeatedly recommended that people go and read Billick's anti-Semitic screeds. Hmm. Cool. Uh, additionally, uh, she also posted an anonymous handwritten letter supporting her gender-critical views. <laughs> so you see, everybody cool. likes me. Yeah, I, uh, I, I regret I just... sending that now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. It, it just it's so strange and abnormal and i think that time and again whenever you get into what we are now sort of like obliged for impartiality reasons to call gender critical views mm-hmm. they are so much more in conflict with if you like a sane society than the weirdest most like outre insane trans person i've ever seen like mm-hmm. it's genuinely repulsive alarming people you know because yeah, well, she's sticking up pictures of like gore and medical yeah. photographs on like it, where the public can see them and it's just yeah, like it's, it's, it's like what do you think's gonna happen it's a medical procedure like it, it's like me posting a, a photo of like mid hip replacement on yeah. my front door and being like this is you are irreversibly like lowering the number of healthy mm. hip bones in the world and also statistically you're more likely to regret that than top surgery that's significantly so yeah also, it's like posting a picture of a sort of, as you say, a mid-hip surgery, and then saying, "Anyway, now that we've all looked at some surgery, would you care to um, would you care to come inside and listen to my views, <laughs> or just walk past my front door? Like, w- would you would you like to have your experience of walking down my street enlivened by like seeing a bunch of like scalpel incisions just Honestly, in your day? If I saw that pinned to somebody's front door, my first thought would be like, oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Bloggs, like someone's playing a nasty joke on you.'" They're trying to scare you by picking this up. By, by Somebody's posted something horrible on your door, Mrs. Boggs, are you okay? And then she's mm. like, no, actually, it's the transgenders. They're trying to take away our precious girl's fertility. And I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry, you're mad. 
Yeah. D- Don't <laughs> fuck with a surgeon's mafia. Or we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be posting pictures of appendectomies all over your front windows. Oh, you do- you don't want to know what the gender surgeon's mafia leaves in your bed if you wrong them. <laughs> 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 a delightful German pussy. So, <laughs> so yeah, but very finicky. Mm. Uh, but so I think to bring to bring all these three <laughs> items together. Finely machined pussy. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's very fine tolerances. That's what the Bergheim piss guy manufactures all day. Mm. <laughs> no, he works in the factory that like creates the machines that machine some yeah, of the parts yeah. in it. You know, Once he does again. the tooling. Once yeah. again, didn't see him. Yeah, I went last weekend. Didn't see him. Mm. It was a hard week at the pussy machine tooling <laughs> factory. <laughs> so they didn't talk about it so much, but they did make pussy for the Nazis during the war. <laughs> no time for piss this week. I'm too focused on machining the tooling for the urethra machine, ironically. <laughs> 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 I do see the cruel, cruel irony in this. <laughs> That's such a cruel irony, I suppose. Not as I'm into women's piss anyway, so I guess it's. Is he not? Academic. Is he genuinely sexist about piss? <laughs> Well, he's in the men's Can toilet. Can you tell? Oh, yeah. D- are, the, are the toilets of Burkheim even gendered? No, he's by the urinals. Yeah. Anyone yeah, yeah. can oh. use the urinals. Uh, okay. Yeah. But I guess it's, it's typically men. I'm, I'm going to need to, like, go to Burkheim and do some, like, field research in mm. this. You know, like, I, I'm here to do two things. I'm here to have, like, alarming lesbian sex in a sort of crowd of bewildered gay men. And I'm here to find out what the piss guy's deal is about female piss. Bringing in the field recorder. <laughs> but then having it taped over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just yeah. doing a blind taste test. Can he tell the difference? Remember what I said <laughs> about the weirdest trans women not being as weird as turfs? <laughs> mm. Well, it's true, though. Yo, yeah, does my piss taste like an HGV? <laughs> <laughs> New thing to be insecure about getting piss dysphoria. <laughs> Did piss for you? Oh, Fuck. No. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, episode title. Um, anyway, but to, to bring all three of these. Different stories. Yeah, just from the last week, by the way, just from the last week. Oh, yeah. Mm. All together. Being trans in Britain is like uh, you wake up and some new shit like this has just dropped. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And you still have to go to work, you know, or, or do whatever the fuck you were going to do with your day. We all have a sanity meter and it's draining fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're losing D6 every day. Mm. But to bring it, I think, back all these things together, these three items, is in every case, these are people defending something that is increasingly well, it was always very indefensible and what is as it gets pushed further and further and further as it, it sort of steadfastly takes positions against like for example we have to guard against dead people <laughs> invading like women's spaces hmm. or like we have to make we have to install a kind of penis detector on just like the bit of fun run through the park the penis detect, the inflatable penis detector arch at the London well, yeah. Marathon, <laughs> or like I am wallpapering my house in surgery photos, and the council cannot stop me. In all cases, this is just a relentless commitment to being as weird and off-putting as possible. Yeah, mm. and I, I think the thing is, like, I, I, I sort of, I go back and forth on the like be normal thing that we do sometimes, right? Because like. I like abnormality, and I think we should make room for more abnormality in public life. What I think it is is cruelty, specifically, mm-hmm. right? And I think the thing that people are responding to when someone from Sky News comes to their park and is like, do you think we should be like pulling down everybody's shorts to figure out what they've got going on under there? They're mostly experiencing that as a kind of strange, cruel thing to do, right? Mm-hmm. And I think most people want society to be kinder. And that is something that has been rigorously opposed by every political tendency in Britain. Well, I was, I was also going to ask, like, is this, and you know, you, you, you would like know more about this than I would, but my sort of feeling from the outside is that the sort of weird behaviours that seem to emerge come out, it seems like they become weirder as they sort of realise that the political energy behind them is very much on their side. And mm-hmm. so like, in yeah. order to sort of like maintain, or in order to sort of maintain the fantasies that like, trans people are this sort of existential danger you know you can sort of begin with like you know the the sort of like the, this the sort of you know the ba- the bathroom bullshit is stuff that like pretty much every british political party has sort of taken on as being like mm-hmm. you know receptive to and so in order to sort of maintain that movement of some kind it has to become weirder and it has to become much more invasive because how else are you yeah. going to sort of like present yourselves as being underdogs or being like the misheard or you know the, the, the sort of confluence with these sort of like anti-woke movements and their whole, you know, we are sort of the malign class and no one listens to us. Was like, 
the government and the opposition parties do very much listen to you. In fact, if anything, they are too receptive to you. They don't refuse to meet with gender critical groups. Yeah, I, I, I think that's very perceptive. Like, I, I, and I think like any radical group, there is always this drive, as you say, to be more extreme, to hype each other up and to get more attention. And it feels like this is sort of going to be like an interesting long-term trend to observe. Interesting also being meaning horrific <laughs> to the degree that yeah. like, it seems like, like the political parties kind of are receptive to the TERFs and everything on the basis, partly on the basis that like, well, if you listen to them now, then like maybe like you can sort of quell their extremities, like you can sort of contain them. But like the reality is like, no, like when you listen to them, they become more extreme. Like the whole, the nature of their movement is one that demands like, you know, that, the one that sort of demands its followers to become more and more extreme to the point where, you know, even like there are sort of, I, I don't know, I don't know whether like there is in, like within tough movements, there are people like, oh guys, I don't know whether like, we're sort of being a bit nuts on this one, or yeah, this is the thing. This is so it, it happens sometimes, and what happens is that the movement very quickly, like internally, cauterizes those. Mm -hmm. And this is absolutely Punishes. a thing about like radical about radical groups like this is that like if you do express doubt, you are like very very quickly like forced back into line or forced out, mm -hmm. right? And so you see this happen, and you see people mm. get de-radicalized this way. Mm. But just in general, in terms of the like kind of treadmill of things getting more radical. This is something that, that trans activists warned people about, mm -hmm. including the people in both parties. Mm -hmm. Like, you hate to hand it to people, but there were trans people in the Conservative Party telling the Conservative Party that this was going to get out of control. And neither neither party listened. No one more or less listened. And this is this is the result. This is where we're at now. You know, and it's gonna be that much harder to to eradicate. Mm, and it becomes more conspiratorial as well, because as mm. well, if they say they want to like debate and to examine the evidence and so on, but the more they realize the evidence simply does not support their positions, the more they have to say, Oh, well, like the reason every major healthcare body in the world uh, internationally is now condemning NHS England is because they've been infiltrated by trans activists. And like the the reason that you know every think tank who like knows what the fuck they're talking about says that we're mental is because you know they're secretly woke or whatever. Well, Stonewall is they've all been taken over by they've Stonewall. They've all been taken over mm. by Stonewall, and like and it's, you know they're being funded by Jewish billionaires. It's not that people disagree with us. It's like you know our, our opposition is secretly being bought, and eventually you arrive in in, in a place where you're just like saying the shit like the UN is Hamas because like you've reached that same sort of point where it's like everyone can see you're full of shit, but you have to like double down and say it's some kind of fucking conspiracy. Mm. I'll use that, in fact, to transition to our next segment. Mm. Thank you. Which is something I did, I wanted to put well, first. A process that could take a few years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, which is, of course, before we do a quick, uh, we'll see if we have time for a quick, um, quick article at the end. Mm. But I, I think it's worth talking about something I alluded to earlier, which is that the moment Keir Starmer receives, I would say, a modicum of any media coverage less than fawning, uh, then he completely falls apart and yep. starts looking very weak and feckless. Yeah, I mean, th this is a another example of things that people told the Labour Party would happen, and things that the Labour Party did not listen about. So, what has happened is there are a number of uh, by-elections, for again, you listening in the States or outside of the UK, where Labour candidates had been secretly recorded at what was very, very strongly referred to as a community cohesion meeting last October. We again, recorded those um, recordings given to the right-wing press, and mm -hmm. then just allowed to be released, like, months later. Going through to, like, increasingly mask-off Islamophobe and anti-Semite Guido Fawkes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who, um, essentially, where people were at this... Uh, this meeting. If he wants to sue us on either of those, I have seen the tweets he posted and then deleted, where he said that Labour was trading unsophisticated Muslim votes for sophisticated Jewish ones. The, at this meeting were multiple prospective parliamentary candidates, including two, one called Azhar Ali and one called Graham Jones. And this was all happening while like mass resignations were occurring in the party regarding the stance on Gaza and so on. What first came out was Ali, a, pre, a candidate in the uh, by-election in Rochdale, it basically said that it was recorded saying Israel, in a quite literal sense, like wanted the events of October 7th to happen so they could have a free hand in Gaza. And my understanding is that this wasn't meant in the kind of like Hamas is beneficial to Netanyahu politically kind of way, but more like the stupid Facebook post conspiracy theory kind yeah. of way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, like false yeah. flag shit, right? That's what he was alleging. Mm -hmm. And then this other guy, Graham Jones, was then a recording of him came out the next day, again, all via Guido Fox, just being frustrated with Israel, 
which in the states is being something Biden claims to be every day. <laughs> yeah, call, calling Netanyahu an asshole. Um, yeah. in, in this case, he he said fucking Israel. I think. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and then he also said that he also said that people that Britons who go fight in the IDF should be locked up, which is. I believe kind yeah. of the law, but kind of not, based on uh, some like loopholes. It, 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 it's it's not, <laughs> but largely because we want it not to be. Yeah. Any case, and what I think is very instructive is that both of these guys are on the right of the party. Yeah. Right. Graham uh, Jones, especially. I mean, Graham Jones is an interesting character. He's uh he has uh let's say very pro the Saudi bombing campaign. He's the one guy who was like pro the Saudi bombing campaign in Yemen. Yeah, the the, the, the member for Riyadh Central, yeah. Yeah, no, he's the member for <laughs> Neom North. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Neom North is weirdly a Lib Dem constituency. <laughs> <laughs> Lib yeah, Dem's it's, winning here. It's, it's a very thin constituency, but a very long one. Mm, that's right. Neom yeah. Halam. Yeah. <laughs> but, so basically, right, it's, uh, yeah, he's like, this is someone who's on the right of the party, right? Yeah. Someone who supported Owen Smith, right? This is... <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I just remembered Owen Smith. He mm. loves a frothy coffee. Yeah, so... <laughs> Damn, simpler times. So like, these, are, these are two guys on the right of the party. Let's look at like the defenses that, that first come out, right? Which is, number one, the defense for Azhar Ali from Nick Thomas Simmons, who's a front bencher, said, look, his comments are totally wrong. However... We should look past them, as the counselor has clearly only fallen for an online conspiracy theory. Oh, okay, so he's just stupid. Well, gotcha. I, actually, the, the quote it says is, he fell for an online conspiracy theory, and that does not represent his view. Which is, like, philosophically incredible, that he both <laughs> fell for it and doesn't believe it. It is, he said it and also <laughs> fell for it, but also that's not his view. Like, he has perfect cognitive dissonance about it. Yeah, you know? he, he both believes and does not believe this. Yes. <laughs> it's clearly true, but I don't believe it. He, he is a blind I can't vampire. believe it's not Israel. He believes it and it's true, but it's not justified. Uh, Our candidate is just simply is very easily tricked. Yeah. He did not think he was espousing that view. He <laughs> thought he was saying a magical incantation that would bring a beanstalk out of the ground. This mm -hmm. is not a political view. And again, not not to make the obvious point, which we're going to hammer home for the rest of this segment, but like people got kicked out of the party for a lot less than this. Yeah. Very recently, mm -hmm. uh, in relation to accusations of anti-Semitism. Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, yeah, like Facebook likes 10 years ago. Yeah, exactly. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, again, this is, they, everyone rushed to his defense until, again, more leaks came out about him talking about, like, quote unquote, the media, triple brackets. Oh, dear. Yeah, this is, again, this is, was the implication of what he was saying. Oh. And then they were like, then okay. he got sued for plagiarism because that was someone else's theory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then we, um. Jennifer Billick furious at this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so. He's ripping me off. Just no. one anti Semite, everyone else is a plagiarist. <laughs> That's right. Just no <laughs> original thinking. Just really lazy. <laughs> now, now, right? And then, of course, he gets uh, disassociated and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. Now. Although it's, it's now too late for yeah. Labour to unendorse him, which is sort of hysterical because mm. Kirstalmer is being forced to endorse him against his will. Yeah, so is, is he in or not? Is he the candidate Yeah, or not? he's running as a Labour candidate. Well, <laughs> Kirstalmer is both endorsing and, and not, not endorsing, endorsing him. him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I and also like it's number one. <laughs> I do hope he wins just so I can start really influ. I want to own one member of Parliament with Facebook like ad buying. That's all. <laughs> just one extremely gullible MP you can sway into sort of anything. I think we can get a full import ban on natural wine. I think we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just say that it's causing chemtrails. Yeah, uh, but the uh, Graham Jones, the uh, the other guy who's involved here, who again like just was clearly very frustrated with Israel in this meeting in the, uh, in the last October, right? Why would anyone be frustrated with Israel yeah. in the current climate? Just, I don't know why. Again, this is, we've reported what he said. That's and all again, that's being again, reported. Again, being like hoist by your own petard, right? Because it's something that you only have to be frustrated about privately if you don't have the spine to be frustrated about it publicly. And so mm. this is, but again, like he is a very, very weird guy. His own electoral history is full of like, his... His his history in Parliament is um <laughs> is like mostly about getting revenge against another guy from his town who he hated. I, I do love this. That. Uh -huh. Like is uh it's 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 very amusing. 
or this guy, uh, Peter Britcliff. He's just like constantly gets it. <laughs> it he, Peter Britcliff was his conservative opponent, and mostly they just got in like side yard disputes with one another. <laughs> it's very, very amusing. Mm hmm. Harassment. Yeah, essentially, like it's very, very amusing. So, so, sort of like the in the loop thing, where like you are doing like consequential matters about like foreign policy in the world, and also in a dispute about a guy's garden wall, like, instead yeah, of like yeah, suburban. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this is um reported in the Lancashire Telegraph. Like I was just looking into this, is that like <laughs> when he was replaced by his ancient enemy in 2019, <laughs> uh, the the end of this guy Britcliff. Then, like, went to a nightclub wearing a picture with Graham Jones's face printed on it. <laughs> like, they like fucking hate scapula? each other. Like, and they what? Were replaced by his ancient <laughs> enemy, like the horned king won the by election. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Lancashire elections are kind of not too far mm. off from that, I suspect. Yeah. He's yeah. a fucking Yorkshireman. They went. <laughs> he went to a nightclub wearing a picture of uh, Graham Jones's top surgery <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as a stark warning to other potential parliamentary candidates. <laughs> no, like Graham the, Jones has got a these, serious pair of Boltons. It's these so days. funny. These two guys have hated each other since 2010. I mean, <laughs> wow. I love this. You know, yeah. this is sort of romance anyway, for the ages. Anyway, but so getting back to it though, right? Jones, yes, yeah, weird guy. We weird guy caught on a hot <laughs> mic being like yeah. fucking Israel. Hmm. Yeah. Weird, so but least weird thing. Yeah. Ed Balls then goes on TV and says, "Let's get stand back and get some facts." Graham Jones, he's not a Corbynite, he's not hard left, and he's not anti-Israel. You could all imagine saying, "Fuck America." No right winger could ever be anti-Semitic. <laughs> Yeah. That's yeah. that's a tendency exclusively of the left. That's interesting because he's kind of given the game away there, isn't it? Because not Corbynite, not hard left. Absolutely not anti-Israel. Like there's a kind of like non sequiturs, but you can yeah. you can see the sort of associative reasoning taking place. Yeah, there. the mean the meaning there is like not fair game for these sorts of attacks. And you've been seeing yeah. briefing from within the Labour Party that has been sort of like frustration at you know the the, the board of deputies or the Jewish Labour movement. I, I'm not sure if it is the Jewish Labour movement, but like a, a, against like certain Jewish organisations that have been like publicising these and critiquing these things as evidence of anti-Semitism. Being like, no, you're not supposed to do it to us, mm -hmm. right? And and sort of like taking what was an unacceptable line under Corbyn of this is clearly pure factionalism, is completely baseless and exists only to kind of discredit the Labour Party. And I simply go, interesting. When did that come in? You mm -hmm. know, when did that start being a thing that it was possible to 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 say? Mm -hmm. You know, seems like you've constructed this incredible petard here. But, <laughs> yeah, well, nice, if, nice petard. Hmm. It's you, just you've, you've, you've made this very nice bet, and yet you find yourself in increasingly <laughs> reluctant to, to lie. To it. lie mm. It. Mm. As it being hoisted, you might look down and, and notice that this petard is hauntingly familiar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> My God! <laughs> now my own petard, <laughs> and you come back, and yet now the demand is: well, everybody at this meeting should be suspended and investigated. Yeah, because it's because it's running out of control again. Because you've you've had this kind of factional weapon that bears very little overlap with real anti-Semitism, catches some of it, and catches a lot of other <laughs> stuff, including more or less any criticism of Israel, however wing nut or however evidence based, and. Yeah, now it's and now it's simply rolling through the Labour Party, going, okay, well, anybody who is who even dares to critique Israel or the IDF or Zionism as an ideology is inherently anti-Semitic and has to go. And it's only a matter of time until they find something Starmer's said in the past, and that's going to be a funny moment. <laughs> well, th well, this is this is what like um, Jewish left-wing activists have warned about as well. Like, there's there's yeah, a fantastic activist called April Rosenblum who wrote a pamphlet called "The Past Didn't Go Anywhere," where where she actually talks about like what are constructive ways to criticize the actions of the Israeli government, and and what are ways that do give cover to anti-Semites, because there are some people who are just like. Really anti-Semitic, who will mm -hmm. who will like host a meeting and the meeting's called like free speech on Israel, and then you turn up and you're like, oh, everyone's doing Hitler salutes, right? That that sort of thing does fucking happen. There is anti-Semitism on the left, like genuinely, and like people mm -hmm. do not not only just like Nazis using it for cover, but also there are people who are left wing genuinely and who are also genuinely anti-Semitic. But then, at, at, like, what April Rosenblum cautions is that like the effect of this situation is is that it becomes impossible to like uh, criticize or even like really talk accurately about what the Israeli government are are really doing. Mm. What Rosenblum, if you're interested to know, what she recommends is just being like as specific as possible. So rather than, like for instance, an example of a bad way of doing it would be to say like, oh, 
Israel are like controlling the US government, right? That's like very clearly bad anti Semitism territory there. More specific would be to say like APAC gives this amount of money to these politicians to support these policies, which I disagree with. Like the more specific you can be, she says, um, as a Jewish left wing activist, then the more helpful and constructive the conversation becomes. Name and CLP, please, Abby. (laughs) (laughs) No, proudly. (laughs) Anyway, anyway. To bring this back around, of course, to Starmer before we sort of uh, finish off, Mm. is that what he has done at every stage of this is he has allowed himself, he has allowed selective leaking. He has tolerated two instances of heinous anti-Semitism, and yet he refuses to apologize, and so he simply must resign. And he minimized them as well. Yeah briefing against them. It's, it's time to go. It's simply unacceptable in this day and age for a leader of the Labour Party to traffic in such sort of reprehensible uh, racism, you know? What, what he, of course, did was he allowed himself to be basically just bounced into ba- seemingly random reactions to just like selective leaks to the right-wing press, which, hmm. of course, will never happen when he's in government, ever. That will never no, happen it, again. It's, it's just the begging thing again. You know, it's just like, please. He drank uh, from the puddle. Yeah. <laughs> he looked at the right wing press, right? He looked at these, again, leaks, which were, again, recorded months ago, but just released now, right? And clearly released one after the other. Yeah, kept in, in stock, you know, so yeah. to, like drip food these out. The yep. key takeaway from this whole sorry debacle is that I'm not gay. <laughs> I think I've made that very clear in all of my statements <laughs> upon this matter. And I think I consider it now close. Well, look, drinking drinking from the puddle is actually a really good demonstration of what children can do when they're banned from buying energy drinks. True. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. Anyway, there's no caffeine in the puddle. If this was recorded <laughs> months ago, why has it only come out now? Genuine question. A cynical leverage of it for political expedience. But what does yep. it get the people leaking it to do that now? Well, labor is popular now, basically. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the rainy day fund. Like yeah. any sort of like... Yeah, transferring audio is also really hard. <laughs> yeah, they had a bunch of attempts. Yeah. No, it, what it is is that like any sort of like political operator of this of this caliber has a filing cabinet full of stuff to just drop mm-hmm. as needed, and this is in the like the rainy day file for uh, you need to like sort of throw a grenade into the labor camp. There's a huge drawer with a padlock on it that says Keir Starmer tasteful nudes, <laughs> which they've not even cracked open yet. Mm. Mm. Anyway, anyway. That's about an hour, and so probably all we have time for today. However, I would like to thank our guest, Abby, for coming and returning to us today. Uh, I would like to remind everybody that there is a Patreon. You can subscribe to it for $5 every month. You Mm -hmm. fucking can. Uh, a reminder, it will be more expensive if you if you do it from the uh, iOS app, from inside the app, from March. You have to cut out Tim Apple. The middleman. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, you'll right. pay more. And also, there is going to be a live show there in is. London on yes. March the thirteenth. Yeah, that's right. Yes, backyard so, comedy club. Yeah, that's right. Backyard so. comedy club where they do comedy unleashed. So yeah, yeah, it should be fun. Is it inside? Because listeners, every time I've gone to a TF live show, Milo always books it. And Milo, you know, I love you very much, but you don't understand that. It, it's cold outside. <laughs> you yeah. keep booking venues well, with I mean, the between doors. the bridges is inside. It's just inside a tent. I, I, and that's sometimes outside. 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 No, it's not the same as outside. It that's is different. Outside. It's not a tent. It's. I'm just gonna end this little Socratic dialogue. A tent is still is still inside. It's just I agree that it's not as well insulated. The last as time conventional I went to a builders. TF live show, I was too cold to laugh. The funniest thing to do would be for Nate to cut off the audio right as the crescendo of people arguing about the tent happens. <laughs> okay. okay. I have plugs. Not a tent, it's a new build. I'm excited, <laughs> I'm excited to be on the same stage that Graham Lennon has is. been it on. Is, it is inside, it's in a building. <laughs> okay, good, thank God. Listeners, I wrote a film. It's about two women dealing with the trauma they got from a bad relationship, and they're both vampires because their ex is Count Dracula. It's called Dracula's Ex-Girlfriend. I'm flying to LA to film it. Uh, in less than a week, uh, and that will be out on Nebula at some point when we finish editing it. That's my plug. I'm going to be in a fucking movie that I wrote that we're filming in Hollywood about vampires. It's going to be sick. Yeah. So uh, look out for that to to be released. That's right. And if you're in LA, check it out. Anyway, if you're in LA, just like drive around. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's one of the key mm. sort of like cinematic pleasures yeah. of the city you live mm. in. You might see Abby, you might not, but most importantly, you'll have a nice drive. I am gonna look because yeah. because mm. they have to give me like temporary tattoos and also nail extensions 
for the duration of the filming. Uh, so I'm going to look quite frightening. If you see me around, I will look unfamiliar. You'll <laughs> think I've gone mad. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. Uh, thank you very come much. Come see me on tour in Australia. Oh, goodness, you've got your I'm stuff. Just, too. You know, I won't come go on see, my website. Come see like uh, d- yeah. uh, three Kill James Bond live shows. Yeah, uh, there yeah. are three of those. Good. Oh, yeah. my dress for the second one arrived today. Eighth, mm. ninth, and tenth of March. The eighth is sold out. There are like a couple of tickets for the ninth left, and the tenth there are a, a decent few left. So, mm. so book those. Also, the, the outfits get more slutty as we go. So That's you do true. want to be there on the final night, which is That's also the true. night when we get to party afterwards. Also true. I am going on April sixth to Malahunta at Fold. Uh, come see me there. <laughs> what, what else have we got in our calendars? Let me crack this, <laughs> this shit open right here. I've got a, I've got a driving lesson on the twenty second. <laughs> just saying because that that is your worst nightmare. You don't want people talking to you in real life. <laughs> that's such a that's such a wrong chest move from you. Why have you? <laughs> okay, all right. This plug segment has gone up for one million years. Let's yeah. go. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.